Today is September 23rd, 2013, and welcome to Monday Mentor. We're continuing our look today at difficult team members by digging a little bit deeper into how they became difficult. I certainly don't want leaders to become armchair psychologists, but understanding the why and the impact of leadership in this evolution is pretty important. Again, another baseline concept. I'm pretty sure team members don't show up at our doorstep as difficult. They don't say in their interview, I will become chippy with you if you ever correct my work, or I'm prone to complete meltdowns when confronted over poor performance. In fact, I bet most of you do a pretty good job of interviewing and vetting potential team members. Some of you even test for emotional intelligence and fit prior to hiring someone. So how did those team members become difficult? Well, the hard but correct answer is we made them that way. That's right. We bred them to behave like that. Maybe you didn't directly, but somewhere in their career lifespan, a leader significantly contributed to their being a difficult team member. Let's talk a little bit about how that happened. There are, a th there are first a few organizational level issues to discuss. One of the great preventative measures to avoid breeding difficult team members and improve the quality of corrective coaching in general is the clear communication of expectations. Do you, in a variety of formats, communicate frequently what is expected of your team members? A very simple test to ensure that whatever you are providing corrective feedback about must have been communicated as an expectation in the last six months. Are the expectations documented in a simple-to-understand format? Do you have a ton of them, or do you focus on the top three elements required for a team member to perform their key functions? Job descriptions don't cut it. Telling a team member on their first day of work doesn't cut it. Having them guess the expectations based on your behaviors do doesn't cut it. Overly convoluted and voluminous policy documents don't cut it. What works is a very simple conversation that includes, this is what we expect from you every day, and is supported with written documentation. The other organizational level issue of special note is consistency. This concept is not absolute, but when an organization responds consistently to behavior and performance issues, it certainly helps to stop the growth of difficult team members. Is a team member in finance coached the same as a team member in sales when tardiness occurs? Some differentiation is expected in large organizations, but when gross differences occur, difficult team members will be bred. Personal leadership behaviors that contribute significantly to producing difficult team members include the same lack of consistency noted above, but the most important is a perceived leadership hypercriticality. Very simply, this means the leader only provides feedback when something's wrong. There is no significant effort to balance corrective feedback with positive feedback. The team members believe that the only interactions with the leader will be bad interactions. This breeds difficult team members and almost predetermines the outcome of any coaching interaction. The other leadership behavior that contributes to difficult team members is any appearance or perception of preferential treatment. If you, have, as a leader, have much different levels of relationships with some team members or interact significantly more with some compared to others, you're going to be creating difficult team members. Your relational depth with all team members will have a significant impact on how corrective coaching is handled and how team members will receive it. Again, you may not have bred these difficult team members yourself, but you certainly have the opportunity to turn them around and help them be productive and happy members of your organization. Take care and have a great week, everyone.